Hello, everyone. Okay, so before I begin, what I want to do is start this timer. My aim with this, for both the purpose of this talk and with my research, is to convey a scientific message um, to a diverse audience such as yourselves in a short time period. So hopefully all of this will come clear towards the, before the buzzer goes off. Also, it doesn't help keeping on the right side of our chair. <laughs> So Doug quite nicely um, introduced this concept of quality versus quantity. And from a citizen science perspective, um, is a trade-off necessary? Do we focus on the citizen side, whereby we're increasing the number of beneficiaries that are um, exposed to environmental messages, or do we focus on the science and focus on data quality? So um, citizen science and OPAL. Uh, Janice quite nicely already introduced you to o the OPAL project. And with citizen science, obviously volunteers have been collecting data um, for centuries, and much of ecology is founded on this data. Um, however, the um, framework is brought into context in the last few decades, um, thinking about this public participation um, in research. And OPAL's um, vision quite nicely encapsulates this. So um, Janice um, told you about one of the surveys that is happening, and there's six others ranging from the air survey to the Bugs Count survey, which is the program that the museum is involved in. Um, and this has been a very successful survey over the last year. As you can see, 840,000 bugs have been counted in this time. Um, it's involved a lot of people from wide backgrounds, and um, because of this, there's a range of skills and experiences um, that these participants bring to uh, the program. However, with that, you need to implement this data quality to be able to use this data. So, um, a number of citizen science programs integrate these um, through methods from expert verification through to um, uh, filtering out the um, records as they come in automatically. Um, now, what we wanted to do with the Bugs Count survey is to take two approaches. Firstly, from the data collection um, approach in sending in um, photographs through both the app and web, which bring with them the metadata, which can be verified by experts and have that locality information with it. But also this novel idea of creating this identification challenge so you can quantify the accuracies of the different groups of participants. So talking firstly about the photographic verification, um, this species quest was part of the bugs count, looking for six key species um, around the UK one of the, which is this Bombus hypnorum, the tree bumblebee. And as you can see, um, these photographs were verified by experts, feeding into information about the accuracy um, coming in through this prog program. And then we can use those records to map the distribution of this invasive species in the UK. And um, we can compare this to um, monitoring programs such as BWAS, which will actually, um, we've seen that there's this expanding um, of the species into the Scottish borders. And the second approach, what we call the identification challenge, mirrors the bugs count in that um, there's identification of a range of invertebrates in a timed period, and this is where the um, timer comes in. Um, this is transformed from a test into a game, and I'll talk about the feedback later. But we have um, coupled this with a questionnaire, which enables us to identify both the um, confidence levels, self-identified, the experience, and the age groups. The initial results coming through from this is that, um, as you would predict, there is this increase in accuracy levels with each of these categories. And we can use this information to feed in, to weight our models. So um, the more experienced um, recorders will contribute more to the initial results than perhaps the less experienced. And a nice side effect of this is that people have actually really enjoyed this project. And um, people will be um, racing against the clock to try and get all of these questions filled in. And, and through that, they learn and they have fun. So to summarize, quantity or quality? Well, actually, in science, you can have both if it's structured in the, in the right um, way. So you can gather large quantities of rigorous data. And in addition to this, this research has found that it's possible to communicate um, and engaging scientific messages to diverse audiences in short periods of time. And this is the cue for the buzzer to go off, because this should be the end of my five minutes. Um, here we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much.